this morning. All right, so we're going to start with our, our working definition of faith that comes from Hebrews chapter 11. But this is kind of our amplified, mm -hmm. expanded version so of what faith is. And again, Hebrews 11, 1, it's the only definition in the entire scripture of what faith is. So it's really important. Our amplified definition of faith. Faith is the substance, the foundation, and the pillar of things that we are hoping for and waiting for. It is the evidence, the conviction, and the confidence that unseen things will become seen, realized, and experienced. So I know that's a mouthful, but that's, this is what faith is. It's the substance of things hoped for. It's the evidence of things that were not yet seen. Yeah. There is no better example of the definition of faith in my humble estimation than the example of Noah, who is our subject today. Noah is the epitome of faith, things he was hoping for mm -hmm. and things that had never, ever, ever been seen in human history. So let's look at our one verse today, Hebrews chapter 11, verse seven, we're talking about Noah. By faith, Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. All right, so we're going to unpack this one verse, and there's too much to even in this one verse to unpack. So we're going to hit some highlights and share some things with you that we think are are necessary for you to understand things that Sarah and I practice ourselves. Mm -hmm. So uh, it says that Noah was divinely warned of things that had never been seen before. Mm -hmm. God told Noah what was coming, the flood. He told him why it was coming because of the, the violence, mm -hmm. specifically the corruption, sin, and wickedness on the earth. And he told Noah how to prepare for it, mm -hmm. what to do about it. I mean, crazy instruction. <laughs> how, how good is God mm -hmm. to, to find this one righteous man and say, Noah, because you're righteous and a preacher of righteousness, the scripture says, yeah. I'm going to tell you what's coming. I'm going to tell you why it's coming. And I'm going to tell you how to prepare for yeah. it. Exactly how to build. Exactly how to build, who to bring in the ark. Yeah. I mean, all of detail. it. Detail. Detail, detail, detail. God, God. God gives them instructions. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I want to add to this that this wasn't just, this isn't just about God warning or telling Noah what to expect. Jesus said that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be when the Son of Man returns. And he gives the example of marrying and giving in marriage and just kind of business as usual. Mm -hmm. But friends, I want to draw this to your attention. Just like God warned Noah, mm -hmm. God has given us his word and is warning us. He's telling us about things that are to come. Mm -hmm. He's given us his word to instruct us about stuff that, you know, it, it, it's really incredibly detailed. You're talking about the detail. Yeah. Listen, I mean, you think about what Jesus said about the end times. He went into unbelievable detail. Spiritual deception, wars, rumors of wars, kingdom against kingdom, nation against nation. Confusion. Confusion, <laughs> famine, pestilence, mm -hmm. earthquakes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, a, a apostasy, people departing from the faith. Mm -hmm. That's just in the gospels. Then we have the entire book of revelation. Yeah. And here in the revelation, what can we expect? Mm -hmm. We can expect the plagues and the judgments of God. Mm -hmm. We can expect a one world religion, a one world government headed up by the beast, the antichrist mm -hmm. and the false prophet. Yeah, we can expect for financial collapse. Everything that the scripture talks yeah. about, the mark of the beast, you can't yeah. buy or sell without it. Mm -hmm. And it seems as though beloved and I'm not, you know, crying the sky is falling. This isn't chicken mm -hmm. little. This is gospel Jesus. Mm -hmm. The things that are happening in our society right now, man, like we're, we're, we're on warp speed toward mm -hmm. all of these things. Yeah. 
Listen, when you have the United Nations calling out the president of the United States and telling him publicly mm -hmm. to withdraw federal troops from Portland, Oregon in order to protect federal facilities, who in the world does the United Nations think it is in telling us what to do? Mm -hmm. It's just that much more of a one world government mm -hmm. telling individual sovereign nations what to do. Mm -hmm. Friends, pay attention to what's happening here. So as Noah was warned divinely, God has warned us divinely of all of these things that are going on. And it says he was divinely warned of things not seen. Yeah. Things that had never happened before. Mm -hmm. God starts telling him, hey, Noah, here's the deal. There's going to be rain. Well, rain had never happened before. We know that at that time there was a canopy that covered the earth that, that uh, um, allowed the, uh, the moisture to, to, um, to fertilize and to hydrate plants and crops and all that stuff. That's how that worked. So God tells them, there's not only going to come rain out of the sky, there's going to be so much that it floods the entire earth. Things not seen. Here's something else that's never been seen before. I need you to build an ark. And here's how big it's going to be. Mm -hmm. Here's the dimensions. Uh, here's the animals that I want you to put on it. Two by two, this, the clean, the unclean, all that stuff. God gives them detailed instructions about things not seen. Now again, beloved, this isn't just about God warning Noah about things not seen. This is one more example of God warning us mm -hmm. about things not seen. Mm -hmm. Listen to what Jesus said in Mark chapter 13, verse 19. For in those days, there will be tribulation, such has not been since the beginning of creation, which God created until this time, nor ever shall be. So what did Jesus say about the tribulation time? Not only that it would be like the days of Noah, mm -hmm. Where there, where there was warning, yeah. but it also would include things never seen mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. During this time of tribulation, when, when we really start ramping up toward the return of Jesus, how incredible is that going to be? As we ramp up toward those times, Jesus said, just like it was with Noah, friends, listen to me. What does he say? There's going to be things that we see and experience mm -hmm. that have never happened before or will ever happen again, mm -hmm. unseen things. So as we get into this, we start realizing that in the days in which we're living right now, we're a lot more like Noah, for those of us who know and love God and are following him, we're a lot more like Noah than maybe we've ever thought about before. And because we're a lot more like Noah, we've got to respond with the mm -hmm. faith of Noah. Yeah. We should. We should. Of course we should. Look like Noah. Yeah. If we don't, there's, there's a problem. Now, next, after he's divinely warned about things not seen, it says that Noah moved with godly fear and prepared an ark for the saving of his household. Mm -hmm. Noah moves with godly fear and it causes him to prepare and to work. Mm -hmm. Here's the first thing I want you to think about. Noah didn't fear physical death mm -hmm. by perishing or drowning in a flood. Mm -hmm. Noah feared disobeying what God told him yeah. to do. Yeah. I want you to think about that. It wasn't about self-preservation. It wasn't about self-preservation. It wasn't about this, this life, this earth has, has everything for me. Uh-uh. He says, God... I don't care about drowning in the flood. That's not the issue. What I care about, Noah, is saying is this. I refuse to disobey you. Mm -hmm. So he moves with godly fear. He moves with godly reverence. And then he starts working. He starts preparing. Mm -hmm. Because he refused to disobey and, and to not believe what God had told him to do. Mm -hmm. Now, the second thing I want to say about this, really, really important. Listen, I'm going to read this to you twice. So let this sink in. 
Faith causes you to prepare for what's coming out of a reverence, a respect, a godly fear. Faith causes you to prepare for what's coming out of reverence for God. Fear, on the other hand, causes you to panic out of self-preservation. And God isn't anywhere in that equation. Now, let me, let me just give you an illustration. Because of godly fear, Noah prepares. He works. He gets ready for what God had told him to do because that's what faith does. Faith causes you to prepare out of reverence. The people in Noah's day, think about that. They watched Noah build an ark for 100 years. Every board, every nail, every bit of pitch was Noah prophesying and preparing them. Listen, the judgment of God is coming. He's moving with godly fear and preparing. What did they do? For a hundred years, they mocked him, they laughed at him, they ridiculed him. And what happens when God himself, Genesis chapter six, shuts the door of the ark, Mm -hmm. then what are the people doing? Fleeing to the ark, pounding on the door. Let us in, let us in. The rain is coming, the floods are coming. Mm -hmm. Do you see what they're doing? Yeah. They're fearing that is causing them to panic, and it has nothing to do with God. It only has to do with self-preservation. They just don't want to drown. It's a, it's a, you guys, we're not pretending it's not a difficult thing to have to entertain the possibility of losing our physical lives. I mean, there's nothing, we're not approaching it like no big deal. We're not flipping. I mean, like, we're not flipping about it. But the Lord in his warning is saying you can prepare and by the Holy Spirit, like you can face things that maybe right now you're going, this is too freaky for me. This is too scary. Even these thoughts, I can't go these places. What I have found even during this crazy season is that going to the word and literally reading through Revelation, rather than it bringing fear, it brings faith. Because that's what it does. Right. It, it brings faith. Um, it or shows it, us that God's in control. And, or it challenges us. Like, if I'm afraid, then I need to go to the Lord about this. That's right. Because this life has never been about here, mm-hmm. you guys. And uh, just another note while I'm thinking about it. Go, go in and read the parable of the wise and foolish virgins and preparing you know, for the bridegroom coming. And also just this super simple scripture, you guys, in the New Testament, where it says, blessed is he who when the master comes is found watching. Mm -hmm. And so you've got to understand this. You're blessed if you're even watching. If you're paying attention, you're blessed for the paying attention. So I would encourage you, eyes open, you guys, eyes open. Jesus gives us this example again in Luke chapter 13, verse 25 where again, it's this last minute fearful panic. Mm -hmm. um, Just like the foolish virgin. Right, trying to to get in after Jesus said, hey, he's shut the door. Mm -hmm. And then people come knocking on the door, let us in, Lord, let us in. And what is his response? I never knew you. See, he was there in their streets. He said, I was here Mm -hmm. preaching and teaching. I was Mm -hmm. among you all the time. Mm -hmm. You didn't give a rip about what I had to say. You didn't pay attention. You didn't prepare. You didn't respond. Mm -hmm. And now out of fear and panic, fueled by self-preservation, you're wanting into the kingdom. And Jesus said, hey, I never knew you. Dude, this is sobering, serious Mm -hmm. stuff. And so... Noah moved with godly fear and prepared an ark for the salvation of himself and his family. So our question to you this morning, friends, are you preparing for what's coming because you have faith in God's word and in God's warning? Are you preparing? What does that look like? Now, I just got to say, because somebody's going to misinterpret this, I'm not some wacko prepper conspiracy theory, right-wing nut job, okay? I'm not that. But I am telling you 
the scripture tells us repeatedly yeah. that we need to be spiritually prepared. Mm -hmm. We need to be watching and waiting. And I don't apologize mm -hmm. for that to anybody or for anything mm -hmm. at all. Are you preparing for what's coming because you have faith in God's word and in his warning? So let me ask you this. Are you preparing intellectually? You know, it's it's been said so many times, right? Christians need to live their lives with their Bible in one hand and their newspaper in the other. Or maybe now today we would say their Bible in one hand and their iPad in the other. Are you preparing intellectually? Mm -hmm. Like, are you paying attention to what's happening in the world spiritually? Are you intellectually paying attention to what's happening in, in the world um, governmentally, politically? Mm -hmm. Because that has a radical impact on on people's lives and how we should be living and looking at things. Listen, I pay attention to politics, not because I think they're the end all, but because politics affects how people live and I wanna be able to help people in how they live. I pay attention to it all. I've got my Bible in one hand and I've got my newspaper in the other. I'm preparing intellectually to know and understand the times and the seasons so that I can know what to do and so how, I can, how we can help other people. Are you preparing spiritually? Sarah talked about this a second ago. Are you preparing spiritually? Are you reading intellectually? And then when you see things in the word and you see what's happening and maybe it creates some, whoa, some fear, panic, mm -hmm. or that's too much, or I don't know if I can handle it. Mm -hmm. Then do you take that to the Lord? Mm -hmm. Do you ask him to increase your faith? Do you ask him to increase your trust? Are you preparing intellectually? Are you preparing spiritually? Mm -hmm. Are you getting spiritually in shape for the race that we have to run. And then finally, are you preparing materially? Yeah, there's a practical point. There's a very practical yeah. point to all. Mm -hmm. Listen, when the United States government even says everybody should have a supply of beans and rice and water, if the government tells you that, how much more should followers of Jesus who understand the times and the seasons be prepared materially? And my dad says that too. And if Al <laughs> says it, that settles it. My dad has always said that. <laughs> so what, what is it materially? You got some food in your house? You got some water in your house? You have some cash available to you? And I don't mean, you know, at uh, being able to go to the bank. I mean, in a safe place where you can get it if you need it. Mm -hmm. uh, among other things, how are you preparing for the days of Noah? Mm -hmm. How are you preparing for these unseen things that Jesus talked about. Well, you might say, oh, well, I, I believe we're gonna be raptured out of here before this ever, ever really gets serious, okay? Well, let me tell you something. If you believe that, if you believe you're gonna be raptured out of here before this really, really gets serious, listen, when it comes time for trouble, come to my house, I'll take care of you. Seriously. There is no promise that we will escape tribulation. In fact, it's promised in this world. Mm -hmm. It's promised that we'll expect, well, is that tribulation with a capital T or a little t? Listen, tribulation is whatever you're facing in your time of need. Mm -hmm. So be prepared intellectually, be prepared spiritually, be prepared materially, mm -hmm. but be prepared. Yeah. Watch and see what's going on. This is what Noah teaches us, okay? Listen, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 3 and Proverbs chapter 27, verse 12, it's the exact same verse and it's repeated twice. Mm. It says the exact same thing and it's repeated twice. And here's what it is. A prudent person sees danger at coming and prepares, but a simpleton, a simpleton goes blindly on and suffers the consequences. Mm -hmm a prudent person, a wise person, sees danger coming and prepares themselves intellectually, spiritually, and materially. A simpleton goes around blindly, oh, this is how things have always been, mm -hmm. marrying, giving in marriage, whatever, yeah. and they suffer the consequences. Friends, this is serious stuff. I told Sarah this morning, this, I believe this is the most serious devotion we've done since we've been doing these. 
And again, it's not to create fear, it's to create faith. Yeah. God has warned us that the very things that are happening and will happen, he's told us in advance. Yeah. He's in charge, he rules and reigns. If my life is in his hands and I'm doing his will, that's the only thing I need to concern myself with. Yeah. Oh, there's so much here, but I, yeah. I just, I keep on hearing hand to the plow, hand to the plow, and I'm, I actually think of Noah and with a mallet, yeah. <laughs> building the ark, being busy doing that which the Lord called him to do, mm -hmm. and the, the crowd harassing him yeah. along the way, taunting him, but then remembering at the end of the day, that guy believed for something that's not sane. And so what, what are the things that you've not experienced in your life, but the Lord has warned you of? And I, I just did a quick search on my eSword um, over the term, the phrase, preach the gospel. And it shows up 68 times and God warns us at minimum 11 times. Um, and I mean, even more than that, because the wording would be different all through the word. But the deal is this, preach the word, preach the word, be bold in your faith, love the lost, but preach the word. That's right. And I fear in this day, in this hour, we're preaching causes, honeys. Yeah. It's more of a, there's a cause here and there's a cause there. And you guys, we need to stay close to the source and the gospel and the power of the word of God. And, and I just challenge you with that, you guys. That's great. Preach the word. Preach the word. Hand to the plow and preach the word. That's good. All right, so I want to end with a little visual here this morning. And uh, I've, I've shown this at church a time or two over the years. But some years ago, I was in our dear friend um, Lisa Fox's gallery. Hi, Le Lisa. Le Leapers Creek Gallery in Leapers Fork. And uh, I saw this sculpture. And it just captured not just my attention, but my heart. And I looked at it, looked at it, looked at it, and finally asked her, what is this? And so here's this incredible sculpture. It weighs a ton. Can you see that? It's a, it's a man looking up to heaven with one hand up in the air, and in his other hand, he's got a, a hammer. So he's sitting on the ground, hand up in the air, other hand with a hammer. And I looked at it, I couldn't figure out what it was. And finally, Lisa said, it's Noah catching the first drop of rain. And then she said, it's entitled validation. Noah was validated for everything he prepared for when he caught that first drop of rain. That first unseen drop was now seen and his faith was validated. Mm -hmm. I can't wait for that which we have not yet seen to be fully seen, realized, and experienced. We will, beloved, be validated in that day. Thank you, Father. And I can't wait. Well, let's have communion together, beloved, shall we? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that you love us so much that you have given us your word. Yes, to warn us about things to come, but to equip us and to increase our faith, to let us know that you're in charge, that none of this stuff is just happening by chance. But it's all according to your divine plan. So Lord, today we say, we choose to operate in faith in your word, in your warning, and in your ways. We reject panic. We reject a worldly fear that is only about self-preservation. We choose godly fear that causes us to prepare for what's coming. Now, Lord, ultimately, we thank you for Jesus, whose body was broken, whose blood was shed, so that we could have life eternal. Mm -hmm. Thank you for it, God. Thank you for it. And Lord, bless our friends who are watching this morning. Pray they would have an awesome gospel-centric day. Yeah. That they'd be preachers of the gospel, lovers of God, lovers of people, expanding the kingdom, making an eternal difference. Lord, thank you for it all. We bless you. We commit our hearts to you one more time in the matchless soon coming name of Jesus yes. in Jesus name. 
Amen. Let's partake, beloved. Amen, amen. All right, friends, we want you to share it. Help us get the word out. We'll see you tomorrow morning. We're gonna start talking about Abraham. It's awesome stuff. We love you. We bless you. Have an awesome day today in Jesus' name.